Hey, what's up, guys? Sergeant Hardy right here. <clears throat> and today we're going to be reacting to the Suez Crisis, part one of two. It's only two parts, but that's okay. Um, I, I've never heard of the Suez Crisis before. I'm assuming it has something to do with Egypt and the Suez Canal. Hence the name. And maybe something to do with Britain, because Britain owned Egypt. Maybe it has to do with, like, Egypt going to war with someone else. But anyways, I actually have some terrible news right now. So apparently my Adobe Premiere Pro um, thing ran out. So apparently I can't use it anymore for some reason. Well, I know why. So what I used to do is I would, I, I would pretty much use Adobe Premiere Pro on my school account since the school provides Adobe Premiere Pro and all the other Adobe apps so I could use them. But unfortunately, I guess they stopped, the schools stopped paying for them, for the subscriptions and all of that. Probably because of COVID, probably because we're not really using it that much, who knows. I'll just have to see how this plays out. I saw this about a week or two ago, so maybe like, maybe it'll be back or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm probably going to be using iMovie then. It's be okay, I guess. But there might be a slight drop in quality. Gosh, that darn cat. But, anyways, I've been talking too much. Let's get started. In 1956, a dispute over the Suez Canal in Egypt led to international crisis and war. Oh, wow. War. Two fading colonial powers, Britain and France, expected an easy victory over Egypt. Wait. What is Egypt doing? I mean, what is France doing? They don't control Egypt. Why do they care about Egypt? Well, probably because they're an alliance or something like that. They're all in NATO. Well, does NATO even exist at this point in 1956? Probably. And the UN, as you can see there. But were forced into a humiliating withdrawal. They lost what? Wow. That must be so embarrassing. Like back then, you know, back in the day, back in the olden days, they could defeat Egypt pretty easily. They could defeat huge empires like the Ottoman Empire, the German Empire, etc. But they can't. Take over Egypt now. Just strange. And then they fail in Vietnam too. Like there's all these um memes about the US failing in Vietnam. Like you, you know the French fought there too, right? The French failed, like and the, so did the Chinese. Like come on like come on, that's and, like if you're gonna make fun of us, like at least make fun of everyone else so we can feel better. As the world's new superpowers flexed their muscles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. USA. It was a stark sign that the age of European imperialism was over and that a new international order had taken its place. Little yeah. remembered today, the events of 1956 had huge consequences. Whoa, for wait a minute. Day. Look at that. They're using a. They're still using propellers on their planes. 11 years after the war concluded. That is interesting. In Germany, they created, like, jets in 1943 or 44. The events of 1956 had huge consequences for Britain and France, the Arab world, Israel, and the United States of America. Yeah, the Suez Canal is pretty important. This is the story of the Suez Crisis whose fallout shaped world affairs for decades to come. Look at all those people. Epic History TV, Suez Crisis, a ditch through the desert. Spinal cord of the British Empire, Otto von Bismarck, Chancellor of Germany. So I think they're, they're referring to the Suez Canal. In 1869, world navigation was transformed by the opening of the Suez Canal. This 100-mile man-made waterway through the... 
By the way, Egypt didn't necessarily look like that back then. Egyptian desert cut 5,000 miles off. And neither did the Oh my gosh, the maps, they're bad. They're bad. Ottoman Empire didn't look like that. There's a mistake over here, and over here, and over there. But the voyage from Europe to Asia, as ships no longer had to sail around Africa. Its construction, overseen by French diplomat Ferdinand de Lesseps, had taken ten years and cost the lives ten of many years. thousands of Egyptian laborers. Dang. The Suez Canal Company, which owned and ran the canal, was a private company owned by its shareholders, including French, Austrian, and Russian investors, as well as the ruler or Khedive of Egypt, Ismail Pasha. In 1875, to pay off his mountainous debts, the Khedive sold his 44% share in the canal company to the British government. Oh, dang. As the world's greatest imperial and naval power, Britain had initially opposed the canal, seeing it as a potential threat. But soon proved to be its greatest beneficiary. By the way, Britain, I'm pretty sure they had more land in Africa than just that. 80% of the ships that used the canal were British, and it became a vital link to the British Empire's eastern colonies. And the jewel in the crown, India. Control of the canal and the security oh, yeah, of Egypt right became a vital British strategic concern. In 1882, when Egyptian anger... Whoa, look at oh, the Ottoman Empire now. They lost a bunch of land. Also, I'm pretty sure Europe. the Ottoman Empire never looked like that. European interference in their country exploded into a nationalist revolt. Led by Colonel Ahmad Urabi, the British sent a military force to intervene. Oh. The Egyptian army was swept aside. Swept aside. And Egypt effectively okay. became a British protectorate for the next 60 years. Then, what's ha then what happened now when Egypt? Failed to defeat Egypt in 1956. Like, what's the difference? Like, you would think that Egypt would be a lot weaker than this point after being under colonial rule for a while. Oh, or maybe the, the Egyptians didn't have, like, guns and stuff like that yet. Maybe. British control of the Suez Canal was a major strategic advantage in both world wars. Yeah. More so in World War II. But in the wake of victory in World War II, the British Empire was in retreat. India, Pakistan, and Burma gained their independence. There were revolts against British rule in Malaya, Kenya, and Cyprus. What about Bangladesh? Or Bengal, whatever you want to call it. Egypt had received formal independence in 1922, but Britain continued to station troops there and govern much of the country's affairs. Only in 1947 did British troops withdraw to the so called Canal Zone oh, wow. under an earlier. Why does Jordan control Palestine? Uh, that's weird. Deal with Egypt's King Farouk. That the British could keep bases there until 1956. Oh, mm, 1956. But Egyptians were turning against Farouk. They blamed him for failing to prevent the creation of the Jewish State of Israel and for Egypt's defeat in the Arab Israeli War that had followed. Oh. They also blamed King Farouk for allowing British troops to remain in Egypt. In the Canal Zone, British soldiers and civilians came under attack from the increasingly hostile local population, Rude. with riots, arson and gun battles, leading the British to impose martial law. Dang. By 1952, a group of nationalist Egyptian army officers, known as the Free Officers Movement, had had enough. 
they enough of what? They're just chilling there. They're not doing anything to you. What do you mean had enough? Chat is feisty today. Seized. Oh, I... Seriously, what? They're just chilling there. What do you mean they had enough? They weren't doing anything. In a military coup, King Farouk was forced to abdicate and went to live out a luxurious exile in Italy. The following year, Egypt was declared a republic. <laughs> Colonel Gamal Abdel Nasser emerged as the new leader and president of Egypt. A committed and charismatic Arab nationalist determined to free Egypt from foreign influence. In the 1950s, America and the West were engaged in a standoff with the Soviet Union, known as the Cold War. A so-called Iron Curtain. Well, not just the Soviet Union, also their, like, puppets and allies. Divided Europe between Communist East and Capitalist West. Around the world, each side tried to win friends and limit the other's influence. Egypt, the largest and most powerful Arab state, would be a valuable prize for either side. But which way would President Nasser turn? Hmm. U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower wanted to win over Nasser, but couldn't grant his request for a major arms deal. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm gonna guess what's gonna happen. Egypt is gonna say that they're gonna join the West. Oh, my cat left. Only if the British leave the Suez Canal. But the British refuse, and then it, so then the war starts. They'd most likely be used against Israel. Also, again, what is this border? Why does Georgian control Palestine? which had many supporters in the U.S. The U.S. and Britain instead offered to fund construction of the Aswan Dam, the centerpiece of NASA's plan to modernize the Egyptian economy. Britain also agreed to remove its troops from the Suez Canal Zone. Isn't that such a weird thing, how Egypt has survived for so long? Why... Actually, now that I think about it, it's not that surprising, I guess. Like, you know, China survived for that long. But seriously, like, it's just so cool how they have the same name as they did back then. You know, they're in, like, the same geographical region. And even today, they're still pretty powerful. They have, um, they, they have the most powerful military in all of Africa. It's pretty cool. Um... I guess you can make a case that the Indus River Valley is sort of like India, and it survived, but I would just, I'd probably disagree with that. But I mean, look, at the same time, the people that live in Egypt today aren't really the same as they were back then, because, you know, the Romans they and the Greeks, they took over Egypt, and they spread their Roman and Greek culture. And then, you know, the Muslims, all, all of their different, like, dynasties and the Ottoman Empire, they all took over Egypt, and they spread their culture. Well, in fact, what's actually interesting is that there's a lot of... There's still a lot of, like, Western influence in Egypt. Like, I think around 10% of Egypt is still a Christian, which is fascinating. But anyways, um... Like, Egypt, Egypt isn't necessarily the same anymore. Like, as, well, it's not surprising. Obviously, they're not the same. But... But yeah, yeah, I just think it's so cool how they have like the they have the same country name and the same area for thousands of years. By June 1956, but then border tension between Israel and her neighbors boiled over as the Israeli army attacked Egyptian-controlled Gaza, killing 38 Egyptian soldiers. Wait, what Egyptian? Egypt controls Gaza? Egyptian controlled Gaza, killing oh. 38 Egyptian soldiers. The Gaza raid made.
But did Israel defeat Egypt? Like, did they not get any concessions? Like, why does Egypt, like, why does Egypt still have the Gaza Strip and all of that? NASA determined to rapidly strengthen and modernize Egypt's army. Since the U.S. wouldn't help, NASA turned to the Soviet bloc. No! And signed a major deal to purchase modern tanks and aircraft from communist Czechoslovakia. You sausage! The deal was seen as a huge triumph across the Arab world. Across the Arab world? Oh no. NASA further antagonized America by establishing diplomatic relations with communist China. Don't smile at me. For oh, Eisen. Well, weird, like, why is that happening, though? Because in real life... Well, obviously, this is also real life, but you know what I mean. Like, today, we know that Egypt never really went communist. I'm, I'm pretty sure they never went communist. So this is, like, really surprising to me. That's why I'm really, you know, intrigued and surprised. Weird. Our chasing an alliance with NASA was proving a major headache. And the... This is all really weird. It's like... It, it, it's like this whole split between the East and the West and... Britain losing its empire, it, it's almost like a divorce happened, but the kids decide, like, like who, which parent they're going to be with. It's, it's weird. You know, this is just such a weird situation, where there's these two completely different powers, and you have to kiss up to one or the other, but at the same time, like, you only do it when it's convenient. And they end up, like, Turning on the side there, just on. It's really weird. The Cold War is strange. U.S. and British offer to fund the Aswan Dam was withdrawn. It was a move that would prove to have serious global repercussions that neither Britain nor America ever saw coming. Tonight, our, uh, tonight, our Egyptian canal will be run by Egyptians. Oh. On the 26th of July, 1956, NASA stunned the world by announcing that with immediate effect, Egypt would nationalize the Suez Canal Company. Oh. We dug the canal with our lives, our skulls, our bones, our blood, he declared. The money is ours, and the Suez Canal belongs to us. Wow. We shall build the Aswan Dam our own way. If Britain and America would not fund the dam, NASA intended to fund it himself with profits from the Suez Canal Company. His speech received an ecstatic response from the people of Egypt. NASA's move was entirely legal. The company's shareholders would be bought out at fair prices. Yet his decision would trigger an international crisis, war, and... Oh, look at that. The name is called the Suez Crisis. The new era in the balance of world power. In Britain, Prime Minister Sir Anthony Eden responded with fury to what he saw as a major attack on British national interests. 15,000 ships a year came through the Suez Canal. And from the Middle East, oh, they brought a, a vital resource that the oh, British oh, economy oh. couldn't survive without. Oil. Oh, oh. Through it, travels today. Yeah, that's actually, like, the main reason why Britain wasn't, an imp wasn't um, a superpower after World War II, because of oil. It's a giant energy shift from, like, coal to oil. And of course, the USA and and the uh, and and what's it called? The USSR, they have all the oil. 
And they're huge. So obviously they're going to become the next superpowers. They have all the resources that everyone wants. People don't want coal anymore. They want oil. About half the oil without which the industry of this country, of Western Europe, of Scandinavia... They what? Without which the industry of this country, of Western Europe... The worst in Europe? What? Of Scandinavia... And of many other countries too. Couldn't keep going. Oh, said. oh. this is a matter of life and death to us all. Well, obviously, Britain is doing more than fine. So I, I think that's a bit dramatic. NASA, as Eden put it, had his thumb on our windpipe. As Britain's foreign secretary in the 1930s and World War II. Eden had made his reputation by opposing appeasement, the policy of trying to maintain peace by giving in to the demands of dictators. But now, with poor health and frayed nerves clouding his judgment, he convinced himself that Nasser was another Hitler or Mussolini, an Arab dictator that Britain had to face down. Ah. Uh... No, I don't think that's a good comparison, because that's, like, a... I guess it is a pretty okay comparison, if you think about it. I guess it sort of makes sense, you know, to Germany, Austria, and the Sudetenland, and all of, like, the other German ethnic land, like, Germany saw that as theirs, and that's the same thing with Egypt. Germany just saw it as reclaiming their lost land. Egypt sees it the same way, I guess. So I guess I can see their logic. The Egyptian president, he decided, would have to go. Oh. French. Well, it looks like my theory at the beginning was wrong. Prime Minister Guy Mollet. Guy. Guy Mollet. Like. That's. Wow. French is so weird. Like, you think that would say guy, like... I don't know, that's weird. Almost none of that sounds like it looks. Agreed with Eaton's assessment. He had an additional reason to want NASA gone. France Why? was fighting a bitter war in its African colony of Algeria against oh, nationalist yeah. rebels. Basically, supplied by what happened with France, they literally just let go of all of their colonies just so they could all of the resources in Algeria. NASA. But it failed anyway, so yeah. Britain and France now secretly began planning a military operation to seize control of the Suez Canal, remove NASA from power, and reaffirm their status as major global powers. That's a what? status as major remove NASA from power. And reaffirm their status as major global powers. Oh. That summer, under pressure from the Americans, Eden agreed to host an international conference in a last effort to find a peaceful solution to the crisis. Whoops. Lancaster House, London, naturally attracted quite a crowd on the opening day of the Suez Conference. 22 nations were represented, only two countries. Wow, they were talking about World War II earlier. Never mind, I was going to make a really, a really bad comparison. Egypt and Greece have declined the invitation to the fateful meeting. It's weird, like in every video, it's like I want to compare what I'm seeing to World War II or World War I in some way. Like I. I always find a way to, like, compare it to one of those things. 18 of the 22 nations supported Britain and France's position that the Suez Canal be returned to international ownership. A proposal turned down flat by President Nasser. Wow. Dang. It must U.S. Be very Secretary of State John Foster Dulles told the British that nevertheless... America would not support an attack on Egypt. Oh. Dulles strongly believed that military action against NASA 
would push the entire Arab world into the arms of the Soviets. Besides, President Eisenhower was running for re-election and would not welcome the distraction. It was a warning that Eden fatefully ignored. Britain oh, and God. France had already chosen the path to war. Join wow, well there we have it. This is a very interesting event. Um well, thank you all for watching. I don't I don't really know if I'm gonna be able to have the intro. I mean the outro. I'm just gonna like pretend to do the outro. So um thank you all for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe and do the all do all the other things and yeah. Goodbye. Hello everyone, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And, you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. But yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, and if not, better than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that... I either know or I have high in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching and have a great day.